Hey guys, Brothers Jackson here. Um, just before I start this video, I feel like I've got a bit of explaining to do regarding my lack of uploads at the moment. It's something I am working on. Um, I'm trying to stockpile more videos, collate more content, and um, basically have it so I have some padding of uh, videos backed up ready to just upload. Uh, I've recently got a new job and in between working 40-50 hour weeks um, it's really become increasingly more tough to stay on top of recording all the time. Um, Brothers Jackson is still something that I enjoy doing so just bear with me whilst I just uh, sort everything out and try and get back on my feet. Um, so with that in mind today's video is um, a collection of stories found on Reddit rather than um, stories curated by myself. Um, so these stories you may have seen before, but um, tell me what you guys think. Do you want me to start doing some Reddit stories or would you prefer my content to be fairly unique? Um, I mean, most of the stories that I narrate probably haven't you won't have heard elsewhere, um, I mean there's a chance you may have on occasion but not all of them, um, so just let me know in the comments what you think, uh, thanks so much guys for your continued support, yeah thank you so much guys for all your continued support, uh, I'd really like to thank Bitty Bitty and DMC as well uh, for always commenting on my videos, uh, I know a lot of you out there always do as well, but um, they're really going, you guys, you two guys are really going out of your way to like make sure that I'm still around and that I'm still going to be uploading. So thanks so much for your support guys. Um, right, so let's begin. Okay, so this is the first time I've posted about this in any sub. Now I'll keep this post short because there isn't much to this story. I live on the west coast of BC in Canada about midway up the coast. I was driving my girlfriend back to her granddad's house, two towns over from mine, about a two and a half journey drive on the highways. I had driven her home and spent the day visiting her family. This town she is from is right on the coast. It's a port city. Not super important, but point is that I spent the day there and was now getting ready to drive back home. About 25 to 30 minutes into the drive, I'm on the highway that runs parallel to the mouth of the river on one side, and the CN tracks on the other. So, there goes rail on my left, the road I'm on, then the sort of mini channel where the river ends. And I'm driving, it's getting dark, but I'm not tired or drowsy at all. There is a few rest stops along the road on my right, on the river bank. I need to piss so I start slowing down at the first one and some thing scurries across the road and that's almost all that happened but it was four legged at least from what I saw black like black black like the unnatural dark no texture or anything to it almost like a void of light or colour in the shape this thing was it ran out of the bush, over the rails, and I was going slow enough that wind and highway noise was gone and I heard it. It sounded like metal tapping as it ran over the ballast and rail. Then the sound of if you took a rod or rebar and stabbed it into the ground, then metal again as it ran in front of me across the road. His body was shaped like how some people describe a UFO, a almost flat disc shape, like an oval stretched out of the legs protruding from the front and back. It had no features, no eyes, no face, no mouth that I could see, I didn't see the bottom or front of it much. It ran across the road, limbs stretching out as it ran, then it ran into the rest area and over the bank and I'm guessing, into the river. I kept driving. I didn't piss until I got home, two hours later. 
Now, I've tried searching this up online, but I've never had any luck. If anyone can help me figure out what I saw, it's Reddit, probably. When I get off work today, I will draw a picture for you guys to see in any case my description isn't good enough. And this thing was big. I mean, like, the size of a VW Beetle. Big and fast. Edit 1. My girlfriend says it may have been a ghost or a skinwalker, but I've never heard of any skinwalkers around here. Wendigos, yes, but I don't know. She's half native, so maybe I'll ask her grandmother about some local native myths. Edit 2. OP delivers. Here is a fast sketch of what this thing looked like. I saw it from the side, but I also drew what I'm assuming it looked like from above. Me and my friends have been dying to get this story out to someone for a while now, so here goes. Me and my two friends have been obsessed with the paranormal, conspiracy theories, etc. for a while now, and we've even made a makeshift Ouija board. Yes, bad idea. Until we could get real ones. Then, my guy friend comes into contact with A, a benevolent spirit who enjoys talking to us. However, A seemed to hint that something wasn't quite right, so we decided to find out. Me, my guy friend, and a girlfriend all get together and set up a Ouija board, complete with all the protections. We start the session and we find something, but it's not good. T, our next ghost, is malevolent from the get-go. Shortly after we make contact, we begin hearing noises around the room and my friends decide to check another part of the room. I hang back to keep an eye on the board. Immediately after, both friends come running in, screaming and looking absolutely shaken. My girlfriend tells me that they ended up seeing an entirely black humanoid thing with white eyes and tiny pupils curled up in the fetal position on the floor. We decided to end the session there. Subsequent sessions tell us that T is a proxy for something much more evil and that A is trying to protect us from both of them. We also figure out A comes in darkness when the lights are off, and that T comes in light, lights on. But here's the creepy part. These demons want to drain my friends of essence, which I could never figure out what it was, and that I am unaffected because I'm not related to them. It's worth noting both friends share the last name, but they're not related either, and T mentioned their last name. I know that T hasn't left my basement because whenever I go in there, I immediately get this feeling of dread and whenever I go into a place where T appeared, I can't bring myself to open the door. I've talked to a friend about this but she won't give anything away, so Reddit is the last place I was able to talk to. If any of you could help me, that could be great. Thanks. Well, honestly, I don't know where to post this. This isn't creepy or scary so much as it is confusing. It makes me curious to know why this happened to me since I've led a pretty mundane and normal life so far. And then suddenly, I find myself looking around the dodgiest websites and going through strange books to come to an answer. Well, this is the long and short of it. A while back, I was talking to my mum about something it was something completely ordinary and I have no memory right now of what it was we were talking about. Anyway, suddenly I get this image in my head. It's not like I blanked out and I felt like my entire physical existence was present in that moment. I mean, I wasn't all there but it's like suddenly this image was planted in my head. Now, the image is this. I don't exactly know where I am but it's really dark and there are bright structures all around me. 
maybe it could be a forest and I was down a narrow trail, but instead of trees, there were these structures. These structures don't have a discernible shape or colour. I can make out they are around simply because they are blocking some kind of white light. But the weirdest part was that everything around me was booming with these loud and inexplicable chants of glory, glory. Now, when I put it in words, it somehow reduces the intensity of my experience into comprehensible information that really does no justice to what I really felt. In that moment, I felt terribly scared and I felt guilty, like I was being shamed for something. I did, and I felt like I had to keep moving forward. It lasted less than a second, and then I snapped back to my reality and thought to myself that something really fucking weird happened. I felt like I would faint if I thought too much about it. You know those times when you think if you think too much about something, it might make you go insane? I don't know how else to put it. I discussed it with my mum, but she shrugged it off as the fanciful ramblings of an over-imaginative child. So yeah, whatever, I got over it and it was cool, but fast forward to a few weeks later and I was watching a really famous HBO miniseries, Angels in America, and there's a part where Pryor is in the hospital and this angel calls out to him. The angel has this really cool monologue towards the end of the scene and she says glory in this really peculiar and somewhat eerily similar way, which left me feeling dazed and scared. Now my brown ass is non-practicing Hindu and I have zero experience or knowledge of Christian scriptures or what exactly angels calling out glory glory is supposed to signify. Nada zip. I do read and watch a lot of shows with religious Christian motifs, but I don't think or I don't know whether it impacts my subconscious in a certain sense. But, ah, uh, fuck it. I hope you guys have some explanation or similar experiences that will help me get to the root of it. Sorry this is so long. I was born and raised in New Orleans. My childhood home was over a hundred years old, located in the middle of the city. We lived there until Hurricane Katrina and all sorts of things happened there that I don't have any explanation for and even at my new home it's almost like something followed me. Now I'm 26 now and I like to think of myself as pretty normal but since I was very small I have always been sensitive to energies or vibes if you will, and my old house was full of them. For example, growing up, I would never walk through our dining room because I felt like something was watching me and I always felt a little silly about it until I noticed. None of my family did either. When I asked my brother why he didn't, he said that he felt eyes on him all the time and he knew they were just waiting to get him, which made my blood run cold because that is what I always felt as well. I asked my mum and dad about it and they told me that when I felt the bad juju, I should ignore it because acknowledging it gave it power. I never questioned that because it seemed to work, but that isn't the story I came to tell though. Now, I was around 12 and I was absolutely obsessed with Buddhism and living as simply as possible, so I got a simple, thin mattress that I put on the floor and every once in a while, I would put baking soda on it to freshen it up and it would get everywhere, so when you walk through, it would leave footprints and I would leave it on the floor for a while and never vacuum it up afterward. So I put the baking soda down and locked my door so the dog didn't get in. When I came back in, I immediately felt an overwhelming sense of dread. I tried to ignore it like I was taught, but as I walked into my bedroom, it got worse and I looked down at my bed and in the centre, there was an abnormally large pair of handprints in the baking soda on the middle of the bed. Like, not normal handprints. These were bigger than any man hands I've ever seen almost comically large. 
I immediately felt sick to my stomach and brushed them away. As I brushed them off, something screamed my name in my right ear. I say screamed, but it couldn't have been louder than a whisper. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I freaked out and ran out of my house and sat on the porch until my parents got home. I have plenty more stories like that, but this has already gone on for too long. This is 100% true. I keep hearing a heartbeat. Kaboom, 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 kaboom. It happens at random times of the day. I just heard it a moment ago for the first time in a few weeks. Directly outside my bedroom window, which prompted me to post this. At first, I thought it was one of my cats heaving. My cats are outside tonight. It's 23.59. I'm in the UK. I've heard this sound in the hallway outside my room, outside my window, on the roof, and in the chimney. I have no idea if it's an auditory hallucination or something else. I'm not afraid. Yet. This happened to me three years ago. I was 18 and surrounded by kids aged from 7 to 14. If they were to mess around with me, I'd clearly be able to figure it out. It was a summer day. My family was in the process of moving out of our haunted house. Another story for another day. Parents were gone and I was babysitting my siblings and their friends. I've always been sensitive to the other side and am able to pick up on energy changes around the house. Anyways, the kids convinced me to play the Charlie Charlie game. You grab a piece of paper and draw two lines, creating a square block on each corner of the page. Then you lay two pencils on the center, one on the bottom, and another is balanced perpendicular to the first. Now first, the pencils wobbled to find balance. Typical. We began our questions. I was aware and made sure the kids didn't mess around, blowing the pencils in a certain direction and whatnot. We asked Charlie, are you here with us? The top pencil literally starts rotating at a speed if someone were to flick it, like a game board with a pointer. It was clear there was some sort of entity with us. We keep asking questions and the kids are getting irked. To end the game, you need to ask Charlie if you can leave. We did this three times individually. Two. No avail. This little shit of a spirit said no. It was after one of the kids started crying that the pencils finally rotated to yes. We rip the paper up and go downstairs, flustered. Thinking I should cleanse the house by some means, I turn on our stereo to play prayers from my religion. I'm a Muslim. I kid you not, the stereo went to max volume after a few minutes and completely shut off. It shorted wouldn't work any longer. At this point, I'm freaking the hell out. I take the kids outside for a walk around the neighborhood to cool down. Our house was a new construction, but from day one, everyone in my family has felt a presence with us and we have all had experiences. This was just one of them. I went to a school where everyone had to stay in dorms. Since it was really difficult to get into and considered a prestige to attend, no matter what happened, my parents did not let me leave that school. Every two or three years, we were assigned a new house, thus new dorm rooms. When I was in grade 9, I was assigned a new house and a dorm of 20 students in a huge room. My bed was right in front of the front door and it scared the shit out of me when it opened by itself when heavy winds occurred, but that wasn't anything paranormal. Just the wind. It started getting weird when I started hearing footsteps in the middle of the night in the room and it stopped suddenly. No sound of anyone headed to a bed. 
The track stopped dead in the middle of the room. We slept without any lights on, so I grabbed my flashlight and nobody was there. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, so didn't think much of it. I heard it several nights in a row, but did not think much of it. It got weird when a friend of mine, whose bed was a few meters away from me, asked me if I heard the footsteps. I was surprised that he heard it too. I was convinced that something was going on. There were several paranormal encounters we had heard from students from other houses. I always thought they were just elaborate stories to fuck with the minds of children in grade 4 to 6. Same month, a guy from another house got possessed by a ghost. Apparently, when he woke up one morning at around 5, an old woman was simply staring at him when he was sleeping. He shouted for her help and several people rushed to help but the woman was gone. One morning, he woke up and spoke weird languages and argued with his housemaster. After that incident, he left the school and left for his village because his parents thought he had a mental problem. Back to me. It was around 3.30am in the night and I woke up suddenly. I felt something pulling my shirt just when I woke up. Nobody was there. I tried to go back to sleep thinking it was nothing. Then, I heard someone running back and forth in the corridor outside my room. The door was shut and I did not have courage to open it and look outside. It kept on going for about 15 minutes. I could not think of anyone in our house who was eager to exercise at 3.30am. I gathered up the courage and opened the door. Nobody was there and no more sound of anyone running. I was convinced that something paranormal was going on. I tried to forget about it and tried to go back to bed since I had to wake up for breakfast at 7. It was now around 4am and I heard a loud screeching sound and it felt like it came from right next to my bed. I woke up and nobody was there. And I shouted for help and slowly everyone woke up and we turned on the lights. Nothing was there. I started getting sick and thought changing the location of the bed would solve it. It didn't. My father started getting worried about my health and I went back home for treatment. I went to several doctors and nothing cured me. I am not much of a religious person but my parents did not want to leave any option unchecked so I went to a religious healer and he made me eat something and gave me a holy book. Hanuman Kalisa and told me to keep it under my pillow while sleeping. I am Hindu, by the way. I went back to school and everything went well. I believe that I experienced paranormal activity. After a year, I was assigned to another room and everything has been great since then. I excelled at my studies. Now, I am a junior at a university and have never experienced anything weird since then. A little backstory before I dive deep into it. We moved into the house I live in about 11 years ago. I was about 9 or 10 at the time of the move. Now, I knew this house was a little older than some around the area, probably like 50 or 60 years old, but it was a nice house that our family needed because it was bigger and more spacious for my sister and I. Ever since I lived here, I've experienced some paranormal stuff over the past decade. I've heard footsteps, voices, seen shadow figures and I've also taken pictures with bright white orbs in them but nothing as weird and creepy as what's been happening to me for a while. Okay so, when I can remember this first thing happening to me was a few years ago. I was probably around 15 or 16, I'm 20 now. And like most teenagers, I sometimes talked on the phone kinda late, probably till like 3 or 4 in the morning on some nights. This night that I remember, I wasn't talking on the phone because I probably had to be up in the morning for work or something like that because I know I was asleep. Anyways, it's about 3 in the morning and my mum comes bursting in my bedroom door. Em is gonna be for mum, 
and I'll put tea for my name. Em, get the fuck out of bed, you need to be up in the morning. T. Mum, I was dead asleep. I wasn't even talking. Em, I know you were talking in here. I could hear you whispering and giggling. T. No, I wasn't, Mum. I was asleep. Em, whatever, go to bed. The thing was, though, I wasn't even awake. I brushed it off thinking that she probably was just half asleep and thought she heard something, so I just went back to sleep. Well, in the next couple of days... It happens again and my mum comes bursting through my door again, around three in the morning, and again, I'm dead asleep. Em, you need to give me your phone right now. T. What? What's going on? Em, I can hear you talking to someone. T. I was dead asleep, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You need to go to bed. Em, I could hear you whispering in your room and giggling again. Who are you talking to? T. No one, I was asleep. You need to quit bursting in my room at three in the morning. Em. Yeah, okay, whatever. Slams door. Now, at this point, it's happened to me two times in one week. I start panicking because, honestly, I don't know what's going on or why my mum is telling me she hates people in my room. It stops for a little while after this night, probably about three or four months. And then it starts happening again to me. I've been dealing with this for years now, so I'm kind of used to it. People tell me to put cameras up in my room, but I really think it will just freak me out more if I do. I would do it if it was someone else, but this is where I still sleep and it will freak me out if I know what it is for sure. The last time it happened to me was the scariest for me, I think. This was probably about five months ago now. I was in my room, dead asleep, because I had to wake up for school the next day, and again, it was around 3 or 4 in the morning. Em, what are you doing? T, what do you mean, you just woke me up? Em, I heard people talking in your room, I just thought it was you. T, what are you talking about? Em, I thought I heard someone talking in your room, so I was listening by your door. It sounded like two little girls in your room, talking about someone and giggling. T. Okay. It wasn't me. Em. Okay, well, sorry. Good night. It's not until the next day that she tells me she knew it wasn't me this time talking because she could hear in whatever it was, voices that were young girls, probably like seven or eight. She told me this is the first time that she thought it wasn't me because she actually sat there and listened to whoever or whatever was talking. She said that she could hear them whispering about something and after a minute of whispering, she could hear them start giggling for like 20 seconds in my room. I'm really spooked out by this and I know it should be happening again soon because it's been a while and these things usually last a few days. I want to know what it is, but I'm a little scared about it. This has been happening to me now for about four or five years, and this was the first time it spooked me this bad. I just don't know what else to do. So, first of all, my son is two, and... He sort of knows what ghosts are because of TV and his older sister. This past week, we have been staying at my grandma's house. She died a few years back and my family still uses the house, but no one lives there now. On two separate occasions, my son points to what seems like nothing and persistently says, Ghost! Ghost! I asked him if he was saying ghost to verify. I was understanding correctly and he confirmed that. He was trying to say ghost. One time, we were outside the house and he pointed at a window and the other time, we were in the kitchen and he pointed at a blank wall. And I used to be terrified of this house because I had some very creepy experiences there. My grandparents lived there my whole life and they both died about eight years ago, within a year of each other. My grandpa died first and... My sister and I took care of my grandma. 
One night, my grandma was in the hospital having surgery and I was staying at the house with a friend. I was in the bathroom and I heard what sounded like my grandma's voice screaming my name but like as quiet as a whisper. I didn't mention this to my friend because I thought I was crazy and we went to bed. The next day, my friend tells me about having the exact same experience of being in the bathroom and hearing my grandma screaming my name, but in like a whisper. I didn't mention my experience because I was so shocked. Another time, I was there alone. I heard a voice sounding like my brother's saying my name and literally went to see if he had just gotten home but no one was there. Another occasion, I heard my aunt's voice talking when no one was there. I used to hear this horrible sound when I lived there. The only thing I can compare it to would be the sound of cracking or lightly crushing a plastic disposable water bottle. I would hear the sound multiple times a day and it gave me a really scary feeling. At the time, I was really into drugs and partying so everyone I told brushed it off as that but I know there was more to it. I had nightmares about that house for years and in some of them there was just this evil black presence in the corner of one of the rooms and that was the same room my son pointed at when he said ghost. I've also had other dreams that have actually come true. A few years after these experiences I was completely sober and living with my daughter and my first husband. One night my husband had a friend sleeping over and daughter was sleeping in her crib while we had an audio only baby monitor on while we were in our bedroom. She started fussing and we heard a male voice comfort her saying, it's okay baby. We assumed his friend heard her crying and got off the couch to console her for us but when we went back to check, he was still sleeping on the couch and had never gotten up. Before this, my husband did not believe any of my other paranormal stories. There were more besides the ones at my grandma's house, but now he suggested that we have a paranormal investigation. Luckily, my sister has connections to a group of paranormal investigators, but in the few months before they came, other stuff happened. My husband said he would see hangers fly out of the closet and other stuff falling off shelves. One night, my daughter was sleeping in her crib, which she had never climbed out of before, and I woke up abruptly. I'm not sure why, but I got up to check on her, and she was standing in the middle of the living room, under the ceiling fan, just looking up at the light, which was on, which I definitely, 100%, know I had turned off when we went to bed. She wasn't able to turn on herself yet. I felt scared because I didn't know how she got out of her crib so I went to turn off the light and there was a flash of light and a loud crack like the light bulb exploded or something. I just grabbed her and brought her to my bed to try and sleep and brushed it off as much as I could. So anyway, a few months later the paranormal team came and stayed the night but they told us they didn't find anything and they cleansed the house. After that, the only other incident in that house was when my other sister was visiting. She told me she felt a presence in my daughter's room and that she could feel it at night. We all thought she was just crazy before that anyway, so it didn't feel like it meant anything, but after that, nothing creepy happened in the house again. But a lot of creepy things started happening to my sister whenever she went. Part of me kind of thought maybe, whatever it was attached itself to her and left me alone. So anyway, since that I hadn't experienced any other paranormal activity, although I have a lot more stories from before that, since my grandma died, I was terrified of her house until last year when my brother and his wife were living there. It felt cleaner and happier and not scary anymore, so I decided to spend a few nights there with my kids when we were in town. Then my son says he sees ghosts and my daughter told me she didn't want to sleep there because it made her have bad dreams. She said she heard a voice in her sleep that told her to get up but she knew she wasn't allowed to so she stayed in bed. Anyway, 
I don't know what to make of any of this, but because of these experiences, I've been kind of scared to do a lot of meditation and stuff because I don't want to open myself up too much like I used to be. But at the same time, I feel like... What is there to be afraid of? My mum also has told me stories about seeing apparitions and shadow people and how our family is very connected to all things spiritual. I don't know what this means, but I was hoping for some advice or any input. Thanks for reading. So, just a few days ago when I woke up in the morning, I found some strange and creepy things from the night before. I've decided to tell the story here. So about four days ago, I woke up just like any other day and I was sure I had had a full night's sleep. I went to bed at 10pm. However, I noticed straight away that the chair in my room was placed right next to my bed, facing me. But the night before, the chair was tucked in next to my computer. This immediately freaked me out and I never remember waking up or why I would move my chair in such a way. What creeped me out even more? I checked my phone and on photos, I noticed four photos had been taken. Looking at the date, they were all taken around 2.45am last night. However, the photos were completely black. In it, I could slightly see some details of my room. I was really creeped out. I don't even remember touching my chair, let alone my phone in the middle of the night, and if I did, why would I take random dark photos? And this has really freaked me out. I tried increasing the contrast on the photos, but nothing. It's just a really dark picture with some of my furniture you can hardly make out. Anyone have an explanation for this? Is it paranormal? Did some creep break into my place and watch me sleep? Or was it something else? If anyone has any ideas, I'd really appreciate it because it's pretty much haunted me to go to sleep since. So, I came across this subreddit because of a friend of mine, and I have never personally used Reddit before now. However, it seems like a good place to get some things off my chest. When I was around 14 or so, I worked at a haunted attraction in Edgemere, MD, called Fort Howard. The place had been converted into a park of sorts and still had all the dungeons from the war standing. Every October, me and my family would volunteer to participate in the haunted house, creating skits and scaring people who came through. Think of Field of Screams, but smaller and a tighter budget. We had always talked about two very specific spirits who would wander the park. The first one we called the Creeper, because he straight up looked like a shadowy version of Jeepers Creepers, at least to the people who had claimed to have seen him, and... It was said he wasn't the nicest being out there. The second, however, was a bit more playful and seemed to enjoy our company. His name was Charlie and he really liked messing around with our electronics, such as the lights, our radios and music equipment. I experienced this on two occasions, the first being when me and a friend were headed to the bathroom between tours. We had to pass by the concession stands to get there and as we were walking back, all, and I mean all of the lights, shut off at once with no warning. Now, it wasn't raining and there was barely any breeze, so there was nothing that could have short-circuited and multiple breakers were being used, so it's not like we blew a breaker. The lights even came back on by themselves. That wasn't really much of a paranormal experience, though, and it didn't freak me out all that much. But the second encounter with Charlie was a little more concerning and hard to explain. Me and my aunt were in one of the dungeons before the haunted house even opened and were setting up some things with a radio in another room for music. We were the only two in the park at the time and the only ones with a key to the dungeon at that. Now, while we were painting one of the rooms with the music playing, it suddenly shut off. 
We waited a few minutes for it to come back on, thinking it may have just been a weak signal. But it didn't. So, I went and checked the radio to see what was wrong with it, and the damn thing was shut off, as if someone had deliberately turned it off. I shook it off, but I couldn't find a logical explanation for it. I turned it back on and told my aunt that it was somehow off. We went about 15 minutes before the radio shut off again. I just shook my head and went to go turn it back on, but my heart sank at what I saw. The cord had been yanked out of the socket it was plugged into and was laying on the ground. After that, I was out. I didn't even take time to tell my aunt what was wrong. I didn't want to be in there with that radio. The only personal experience I've had with the creeper, however, wasn't really much. I was just certain that I had seen someone in a place no one was allowed to be, and when I told my mum what they looked like, she told me that it was probably him. He was very tall, about six foot five, and wore a trench coat with a cowboy looking hat. The only other time I was there when something regarding him happened was when my aunt, yes, the same one, made a ghost box and brought it down there. She was pretty certain that she was talking to Mr. C when he started becoming threatening. She told him that she wasn't afraid of him and he just left. A bit later, however, while she was working with a crowbar, it fell on her thumb. Something that would normally only cause a bruise at worst caused her thumb to bust open and gush blood. I'm pretty sure she needed stitches even after that. To be completely honest, considering how long ago it was, I'm not even too sure I believe everything that happened myself, but that's how I remember it. I wish these things would have happened more towards the present, so I would at least remember more and possibly be able to get a photo or video evidence, but this is all I have got for you guys right now. I'm sorry, but it's something. I'm a 19 year old male in good mental and physical health. No medications to trigger hallucinations or anything of the sort. Let me start off by saying that a bunch of other paranormal experiences in my house. My family has experienced lights flickering, doors locking, weird coloured orbs floating around and that sort of stuff. However, this is by far the loudest and most outright obvious display of bravado that a spirit has used to communicate with me. It was around 3.10am yesterday night and I was in my room trying to sleep. It was a relatively quiet night, the wind was blowing softly outside and I could hear it clearly. As I was about to drift into sleep, I was jolted awake by a loud sound that sounded like something between a spark blowing and a huge flame starting. I open my eyes and for a split second I see this blindingly white light disperse out like gas. The light looked like it was coming from a small concentrated area and it did not fill the width of my small room. Whatever it was seemed to have a circular form before the explosion and was destroyed as a result of the explosion. I was sitting in bed after looking around for any scraps of material that could have caused the explosion but Absolutely nothing in my room was damaged or altered. During this time, I was only half sure that I actually heard and saw the explosion because I was well aware that my brain could have been playing tricks on me. I heard my grandma downstairs as she usually has trouble sleeping and went to go check on her. When I walk into her room, she immediately asked me if I dropped something heavy on the ground. I told her that no, I hadn't and... She said that she heard a very loud noise directly from where my room would be. Not wanting to keep her up any longer, I went back to my room and told her that I did in fact drop something. After that, I was a bit shaken up but managed to fall to sleep. Now that I have proved the noise was real, I am wondering if anyone can help me figure out what exactly happened in my room. That sort of display would surely be very energy consuming to a spirit and I haven't heard of it happening to anyone else before. For now, I'm calling this event a spirit explosion until someone can help me find a more appropriate name.
Hey guys, Brothers Jackson here. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like I say, trying a few new things. Uh, so obviously, like I say, these stories you definitely may have seen before. There's a larger chance you have. But at the exact same time, I can make the videos a lot longer because there's basically a massive abundance of them. Um, and I can categorize it by subreddit rather than just by topic. Whereas in my videos at the minute, I kind of like to put them in by topic because I'm not huge on just random stories being mixed matched together. But again, if you guys want to see something like that, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, once again, thanks for all your support. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. And please just hold out. I'm just getting into the swing of things, so don't worry about it. Thanks for your support. Peace out, guys. Bye.